Introducing the new 2019 Voigt Smith Innovation 750 gallon brine maker. Hey guys, I'm Jordan Smith, owner of Voigt Smith Innovation. Today we're going to run through the features and functionalities of our 750 gallon brine maker. The new 750 brine maker is a few feet larger than our old design, but we believe that the slightly larger footprint is well worth the benefits you'll receive. The dimensions of the new unit are listed on our website, 128 inches wide, 67 inches deep, 96 inches high. The height to the top of the loading hopper is 90 inches, and the opening of the, of the hopper is 65 inches. So we suggest a smaller than normal bucket, something maybe a little bit bigger than this, a 60 inch bucket's recommended to loan our brine maker. Before I get into the operation of the brine maker, we're gonna go over a few of the optional accessories, such as this here cowboy hat. Some of the optional accessories for 2019 include air purge, the nice thing about air purge is it integrates into your plumbing, you hook it up to shop air, and you can flush all your lines when you're filling your, uh, when you're filling your sprayers so you don't have to make a mess in your shop and on the floor. Another optional accessory for 2019 is a manifold system. We can design a custom solution for your facility that allow you to plumb your brine maker into your holding tanks. This will allow you to pump out finished brine into your tanks and also draw it back in and fill your trucks from the fill valve on the brine maker. We also can set it up for multiple additives injection. So let's say you want to do an 80-20 blend of brine and calcium chloride or some similar de-icing additive. We can set up all your plumbing with a manifold system and including even with a digital readout, a meter, so you know how much you're pumping into each truck so that you can fill all your trucks and monitor what you're using. Now we're gonna run through the operations of making a batch of brine with your brine maker. First thing you're gonna do is start filling your water. Remember, our system has two automatic float valves for the top and bottom tank, so the system will not overfill itself with water. As your water's filling, you're gonna start filling the top hopper with salt. On the first batch of brine you make, we suggest putting in 4,000 pounds of salt. That's only for the first batch, not for sub subsequent batches. After your water is full, you can start your agitation. The way that you start your agitation is you make sure that your bottom tank suction line is open. That's this line here. The way you know the valve is open is if it's running parallel to the line. This would be closed, this would be open. Now we need to turn on our agitation valve. This is our agitation manifold. This is what's going to actually start mixing the salt in the water. So we need to run this valve open off the pressure side of the pump, which is the top side of the pump. Now our agitation's on and our salt, salt brine is mixing. While the salt brine is mixing, we can monitor the salinity level of the salt by using this tube that has a salinimeter in it. When you receive your brine maker, this is going to be zip tied to this tube uh, in a protective case. Once you open that tube, this is what you're going to find inside. This has readings on it from 4 up to 26. What the numbers on the salinimeter mean are the percentage of brine by weight. Our target for making salt brine for de-icing is 23.3%. Typically speaking, if you're between 23 and 24, you're gonna be okay. We don't wanna go over 24 as the higher mixtures actually freeze at a higher temperature and that's, that's the opposite of what we're trying to do here. So this will be floating inside this tube. In order to keep correct solution of brine for proper reading inside the tube, we need to open this valve. This is going to inundate this tube with fresh brine, that is the correct salinity, as the system's mixing. Over time, you're gonna get comfortable with your system and figure out about how long it takes to ma make a batch of brine, so you're gonna know about when you need to check to see if your brine's done. When you wanna check if the brine is done, we're gonna turn this valve off, because there's gonna be a lot of turbulence in this tube from keeping the fresh brine flowing through it. Once the turbulence settles down and the foam dies away, we're gonna to wanna to see this floating between 23 and 24 percent, ideally 23.3 percent. You'll know it's there when the surface of the water is at that point. Once your brine is at 23.3 percent, it's now time to either pump it into your sprayer or into your holding tank system. If you're going to pump it right into your sprayer, we're going to turn off our agitation. We're going to have a fill hose hooked up to here. This is a cam lock, a quick attach system. And we're going to hook one end into here and one end into our sprayer. And then we're going to open the fill valve and turn our pump back on. 
Now that's going to begin to fill your sprayer, assuming the valves in your sprayer are open and ready to fill. This fill system has a, a filter built in that helps you prevent getting sediment and debris inside your sprayer. It's much easier to clean a filter than to clean a plug sprayer. If and when this filter becomes plugged, it has a self-flushing system. There's a small valve down here that opens and that'll actually flush the filter out. This has a barb on it in case you want to run a hose line to a floor drain or to a drain inside your shop. Otherwise, a five gallon pail works okay too. We typically see between three and five seconds should flush it out. However, if that's not getting the filter clean enough, you can always turn your system off, unscrew the filter. You'll see it's a stainless steel mesh filter. So this is a reusable washable filter. You do not have to replace it when it's plugged. Wash it in some warm water, get all the sediment and debris out of it, and then reinstall it. Make sure you tighten it back down good, otherwise it's gonna leak. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Make sure to tighten it down good, otherwise it's gonna leak. If you're filling your holding tanks instead of filling your sprayer, that discharge is actually going to be over here. Earlier we talked about a manifold system that we can help design for you, where this line is actually going to go out into holding tanks that are sitting, if you have room inside, inside your shop, otherwise most companies we work with are putting their holding tanks outside their shop. That's going to connect here. We're going to obviously have this valve closed because we're not filling a truck. And we're gonna go on the pressure side of our pump, make sure agitation's off, and we're gonna open this valve. Now we're pulling brine from the bottom tank of the brine maker, and it's going out this pressure side, out into your holding tanks. We suggest only pumping out the bottom tank when you're making brine. The system does make around 1,000 gallons per batch, and if you wanted to utilize the full batch, the way you do that, is by opening this valve over here. This is actually gonna gravity drain the top tank. We don't suggest doing this, number one, because it's slow. Number two, because even though there's a filter in there, the salt still will get in the bottom tank, and that's something you're gonna have to clean out at the end of the year. And it's really not necessary because it's actually a lot faster to make brine by only mixing the bottom tank each load. Now that you've made your first batch of brine, We'll go on to the procedure of making the second batch and then some general tips about making brine. So on the first load, we told you to put 4,000 pounds in your hopper. The only other time that that 4,000 pound number is relevant is if, if you clean out your top tank. When I say clean out your top tank, I mean you actually physically scoop out any debris, salt, sediment from the top tank, drain it through this bottom clean out system. This does have a cam lock on it also in case you wanna run it to a floor drain or outside your shop. And there's a valve on the bottom that you can open and actually go in the top tank and flush it all clean with a pressure washer, garden hose, or whatever you want to do. Guys, a lot of times will ask how many times a year you have to clean out your brine maker. That's completely dependent on the cleanliness of your salt. So at our operation, our shop, we have pretty clean salt. We only clean ours out one or two times a year, and we're doing half a million gallons plus per year. I've also worked with companies that had such filthy salt that they had to clean out their brine maker after every 100,000 gallons or so. Just monitor what's going on with your brine maker. If, if you're seeing that after, you know, if you drain your, the water out of your top tank and it's all black sediment and goo left behind, it's probably time to clean it out. Uh, if you notice that your brine is mixing really slowly and there's a proper amount of salt in there, it could be that you have a lot of sediment and, and debris up in your tank that's plugging up your agitation system. So what, we, what we'd recommend is, like I said, keeping an eye on what the conditions of your top tank look like and clean it out only as necessary. Most people we work with clean them out two to three times a year, and that's plenty. So like I said, the only time you're gonna put 4,000 pounds in is the first batch and then after you clean the tank out. For subsequent batches, you're gonna put in around 1,300 pounds of salt. Now the amount that you put in is not, it does not need to be exact. All we're trying to do is keep this hopper fed to the point where your brine mixes quickly and efficiently. So if you put in 1,500 instead of 1,300, no big deal. If you put in 1,800 instead of 1,300, no big deal. Um, the only thing I would tell you is if all of a sudden you know, there's hardly any water in the top tank and then the salt is heaping up and over, you're probably adding too much per time. But typically speaking, 
you know, the more salt we have in the top hopper within reason, the faster your brine's gonna mix, the more efficient you're gonna be. So we talked about how to, f how to fill your storage tanks from your brine maker, but we forgot to mention on how you can fill your trucks from your storage tanks. All you have to do to fill from your storage tanks is reverse the process of how you filled your storage tanks. You're gonna turn off the pressure side that you filled your storage tanks with, and you're gonna turn on the suction side. So this is actually gonna pull from your storage tanks into your pump. Now you'll see that the suction line for your bottom brine maker tank is on. That's not gonna work. We need to make sure that's turned off. You always wanna make sure you're only having one suction line turned on, otherwise you're gonna draw air or you're gonna pull brine into your system while you're trying to, to mix brine. So always make sure you're only pulling from one place. And remember the lower side of the pump is the suction side, high side is the pressure side. So now we're drawing from our storage tanks into the pump and it's gonna come up here, sorry, wrong line. It's gonna come up here to the same fill station that we talked about filling from earlier. Now if we open this valve and we have our connection here into our truck, now we're filling from our storage tanks. So what we've done is we've actually completely isolated the brine maker off. Nothing besides the pump motor on the brine maker and the fill line is being used. Agitation's off, tank suction's off. We're just pulling from your outdoor storage tanks into your pump and up into your fill line. Hey guys, where are you going? I need to get down from here. Guys, get me down, I'm scared of heights. I'm gonna run through a common list of questions and concerns we get about our brine making systems. A few of them we've covered a little bit already, but we're gonna reiterate them just because these are the common pain points that we hear about when people first are learning to use our brine makers. The first thing is, don't worry about getting the exact amount of salt in the top hopper. We mentioned the 4,000 pounds for the first batch. We mentioned the 1,300 pounds for the subsequent batches. But the main key is to keep the top hopper fed so that your brine maker is mixing quickly and efficiently. If your brine maker is mixing really slow, it probably means there's not enough salt in the top hopper. The only other thing it could be is that you have a, a top tank full of sludge. But again, unless your salt's really dirty, that shouldn't be a routine issue. Another thing is, going along with the first point is, don't worry that there's a bunch of salt left in the top tank when your brine is done mixing. When that salinometer reads 23.3, there should be a lot of salt left in your top tank. If there's not, it probably took two to three hours for your batch to mix because you didn't have enough salt in the top tank. A 23.3% gallon of brine has 2.28 pounds of salt in it. We wanna make sure we have an excess of that in the top tank for our system capacity so that the brine mixes quickly and efficiently so you're not sitting around waiting for brine to mix. We mentioned about how our water fill system has an auto float fill and comes standard with a garden hose fitting. The frustration a lot of guys have with the garden hose fitting is that it fills very slowly. This is because most garden hoses only put out between 15 and 30 gallons per minute. Because it's a thousand gallon system, math says that it's gonna take up to 30 minutes for the system to fill with a garden hose. A lot of systems we've set up for people have had a one to one and a half inch plumbing line. If you're on city municipal water, it should be fairly inexpensive to hook up a larger water line and it's gonna pay for itself very quickly and reduce labor. If you're in a situation where you're on a well or you don't have a high pressure municipal water supply, what you can do and what we can help you do is set up a fresh water supply tank. This tank would sit somewhere behind or next to your brine maker and it's gonna have our same automatic float system It's installed at the top of that tank. From there, we're gonna add some extra plumbing to your brine maker, which is gonna allow you to draw from that freshwater tank. Now, all of a sudden, you're using a 220 gallon per minute pump to pull from a two inch fitting out of that tank to fill your system. Math tells you that it should only take about five minutes or less to fill. If that's something that you need help with, just call and ask, we can help you. If you check your brine mixture too late and you notice that your brine is over 23.3%, don't panic, it's easy to fix. Two ways to look at it. Number one, if you're using this actual batch of brine to pump into a sprayer, you're gonna want it to be as close to 23.3 as you can because that's got the lowest free, freeze point of negative six Fahrenheit. So if, if all of a sudden your is reading 26%, all you have to do is introduce some additional fresh water into your system. Just add water and keep your 
keep your valve open on here and check it regularly until you get it back down to about 23.3%. For a full batch in this system, you're not gonna have to add a lot. It should only be between 50 and 70 gallons, depending on how much over you're mixed. The other option is, if you're using a bulk storage system, let's say you have 25,000 gallons of bulk brine storage tanks outside, if you have one batch that's a little bit over, let's say even like 24 to 25%, not a huge deal. As long as you're not doing it on a regular basis, that one batch going in, into your 25,000 gallon system is gonna make a very small impact on your overall brine percentage in your storage tanks. One way to help ensure that your mix and your tanks is, is accurate is you can actually put a little test, um, test valve, something similar to this small valve on this assembly uh, with a little fill spout. You can just fill into a pitcher from your holding tanks and you can take your cylindimeter out of this tube or you can buy a separate one and actually test the mixture of your storage tanks. Again, we want to be as close to 23.3% as we can. If you check your tanks and they're too strong or too weak, all you have to do is introduce some weaker or um, stronger batches from your brine maker, depending on which side you're at. Don't worry about getting it to exactly 23.3. If you're between 23 and 24, you're going to be okay. We talked about how your pump on these systems is a 220 volt single phase pump system. It's attached to a two inch banjo poly pump. Uh, this pump is susceptible to damage if you deadhead or run the pump dry for an extended period of time. What that means is you always want to make sure that if you're running the pump, there is an active suction line open. So that means you're either pulling from your storage tanks or pulling from your bottom tank, your brine maker. And on the opposite side, on the pressure side, you always want to make sure that something is open, whether you're agitating or pumping out. Um, you just want to try to avoid deadheading or dry, dry running your pump. This is going to help extend the life of your pump and it's going to give you long and happy operation. <laughs> when you have an electrician wire these pumps in, you want to make sure they wire them opposite rotation. Inside the junction box in the pumps, there's a chart that shows which colors go to which for standard or opposite rotation. If you have them wired in standard rotation, your pump is going to sit and cavitate, you're not going to have any flow to your system and it's not going to work. Make sure that it gets wired opposite rotation and everything will work the way it should. Another thing is, we've talked about the water fill valve a number of times. One thing that I failed to mention is that once you start mixing your brine, you're going to want to turn this valve off. Even though this has an automatic float system, you need to turn it off because what happens is when you're mixing brine, the level in this tank is going to go up because we're actually going to almost overwhelm the overflow gravity overflow system which means the level in this tank is going to go down. What's going to happen then is the automatic float valve system is going to inject more water into your brine maker. And what that means is you actually have an overbatch of brine. Now what will happen is if you turn the system off completely, as this water, so this tank will be full, this one will be overfilled over the overflows. Once you turn the system off and gravity takes back over, the water is going to go down into the bottom tank and actually overflow it. Another important step with your brine maker is a year-end clean out and overall check before you shut it down for the season. It is very important not to leave salt brine in your pump housing. If you do that, you will destroy the seal and the shaft of the pump and it will have to be replaced. That will not be a warranty claim item. That is something you need to be responsible for annually in flushing out your pump, flushing out your system. We recommend actually flushing and cleaning the entire system. Reason being, if you, lean, if you leave any salt brine in any of the lines or the filter uh, or the tanks, what's gonna happen is the water's gonna evaporate out, the salt's gonna fall out of solution, and your lines will be caked full of salt, your tanks will be full of dry salt, which I guess isn't as big of a deal, but it's just nice to have a clean system when you start next, next, next fall. At the end of the year, to clean out your system, there's a few steps involved. First thing you're gonna wanna do like we talked about earlier, is drain your top tank. You're gonna open this valve on the end of the tank, you're gonna let that gravity drain out. The longer you let that drain out, the drier the salt and sediment left behind will be, the easier it'll be for someone to scoop it out. Once the water's drained out of there, someone will have to go back in the top tank, kind of like I got abandoned earlier in, and they're gonna actually take a shovel, scoop the sediment and salt out. You don't have to get every last piece, you get most of it. From there, you actually can open the bottom valve that's attached to this hose, and flush the whole top system out with clean water and actually run it through um, your entire system. Run it through your agitation, uh, run it through your discharge lines, uh, flush through the bottom tank, just run fresh water through the whole thing. 
Once you're done getting the whole thing clean, every other year you might need to check your bottom tank to see if there's any dried salt in there. If there is, you can have someone clean that. Then what you'll do is you'll open the bottom plug on the pump to drain the water out. And open all your valves, get all the water out of the system. Now your brine maker's ready to go into storage. Thanks for watching our video featuring our 750 brine maker. We hope it gives you a better understanding of how the system works and how the system can work for you. If you have any other questions, check out our other videos on YouTube and check out our website. We hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.